and renew our spirit. Fill me. Hi, everybody. My name is Caden. I'm Jake. Hey everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, YouTube channel, and we are very, very glad you guys are with us. Much love to everybody out there. Thank you guys very, very, very much for being a part of our little ecclesia here and for sharing the love of Messiah Yahushua and for the love of Yah. And let us begin with a quick little prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you as your people. We come before you as those who are willing to be your people and to follow everything that you have sent our way. Father, we thank you for your Torah. We thank you for your son. We thank you for direction. We thank you for hope. We thank you for the new world you will bring to us in the kingdom that is going to be coming. Father, please bless those who are listening to this. Father, please dwell with us. Bring your Ruha HaKadosh amongst other spirits that you will be with us, that you will take care of us and you will guide us through these lessons and through your times and through these end times that we are all living. And Father, please bless us in, in what we are doing. Help us to have our eyes open and our ears open that we are able to see and hear everything that you are trying to speak through us and through, through the words that you are trying to deliver to us. We thank you for everything. Again, I thank you for this little ecclesia and I thank you for each and every person that is here. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. Okay, everybody. Um, thank you guys very, very much for joining in here. We have a um, let's let's who do we have in the chat room, Miss Nicole? Um, we have quite a few. We have sixteen people. It says okay. In here. We I saw the Creole family um, in there. I saw emissary of Elohim. emissary of Elohim and his little angel that he has. Much love to both of you guys. MD, um, which I think is Michelle. Maybe Michelle. I don't know if that's you. Um, Zach Rizzi, Zach and his Rian family. And, and Damon. Damon, much love, little buddy. Hope you are doing well. And is it Nazir? I don't is know. Nazir, yeah. Yeah. No, he's, yes, he's been around. Nazir. I think he or she, yeah. Um, they joined. They're in. Very good to see you guys, everybody out there. Nazir Mush, Mush, um, I think is the right way to say that. But um, Mushroom, I think. Yeah. Um, as... Or, Ariel? I think it's Addie. I think Addie's in there. Isn't Addie's that, in there, too. That's the poetry gal? Here too. Yep. Okay. But I think Dad might be here, too, because it says, just remember, it's her dad speaking. Okay. So I think it's the whole Creole family. Okay. It's, oh, it's hopefully the whole Creole family. Much love to you guys. Um, this is a worldwide hanging out thing. We have people from, I know there's some Canadians in here. We have South Africa folks. We have um, USA. We have Panama. And Patsy's here, which I think she's from Jamaica, if I remember Jamaica. right. Jamaica. So this is like a Thank worldwide uh, hanging out crew here so thank you guys very very much renee okay is in here and also i think it's ariel A -R -I -E -L. ariel all right well thank you guys very very much um so we have uh topanga uh la california um nazir is in the the california so a, a beautiful california there um us of a all right guys so let us begin eli who is are you reading the shema yes. let's begin with the shema and i i the, what i told him is he had to read this with authority and so let's see what he can do being 15 years old with authority here oh yasharel yahoo elohenu yahoo is one and you shall love yahoo eloheka with all your heart with all your soul and with all your might and these words which i command you this day shall be in your heart and you shall teach them diligently unto your children and you and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as front lizards in your eyes. And you shall write them upon the post of your house and on your gates. Beautiful. And so everyone here, I guess, the Shema is a big is a big thing, right? We we what is the what does Shema mean? Hear hear and do. Hear and hear and do. Hear and obey. And it, it's it's if we read this and it says. Hear, O Yashrael. That is speaking to all of us, right? We are Yashrael. There is nobody else who it could be 
because there's no definitions. It doesn't say here, O Christians, or here, O Mormons, or here, O Catholics. It, here, it says here, O Yashrael. And the very first thing it says, Yahuwah is one. And that's, that's very important. And that, you know, it goes on and it tells us that we need to write these laws, statutes, and commands on our doorsteps. We need to have them on the frontlets of our eyes. They need to be on the gates of our house. They need to be on everything. We need to embrace ourselves. If we had Torah clothes, we should be wearing Torah clothes at all times because they will protect us from the viciousness of the evil uh, spiritual darkness that is against us at all times. Okay, so what I want to do before that is get into there. Damon, I hope you are well. I saw you, blood, you busted your finger up and you have a blood vessel. I hope you are. will get through this. It, it, those are nasty looking. Um, hopefully it doesn't hurt too bad to you, little buddy. If anybody has any prayer requests out there or anything of the sort, please put them in. And if you can give us a direction of where you want us to pray, we are glad to do this. And we would love to um, pray for you guys. So last week we got um, we did a little um, chat room uh, quiz. And so Nicole has some results of the chat room quiz on exactly who took it. And for those who want to play in this next little section here, please do not read the law, statutes, and commands openly right quick. We're going to see if they're on your mind. We're going to see if you guys have written them on your hearts, written them on your mind, and they're written on your soul, and if you guys can recite them. So last week, we ended up with what, Miss Nicole? We had a total of 13 that they got so as the group. The chat room, you guys out there, you guys got a total of 13. First place went to Mr. Zachariah Z. Bum, 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 bum. He took how many? One, two, three, four. So Zach got four. And then Carla, I think she got two or three. Carla got two or three. The grand got some of the same ones that Zachariah Z did. Okay. And I haven't seen her in here yet, but she got four or five. Okay. So, so as we are going to be doing that, let's see if we can quickly get in. Uh, not even quickly. Let's see if the chat room can do better than 13 for last week. So let's go ahead and um, let's start putting in the chat room what you guys have. And as we do this, um, I guess we this is a good time for us. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go around and we're going to do a little bit of praise and worship for this. So the chat room, um, if you guys can um, start putting in the commandments of our creator, we will see if you guys can beat 13 and see if you guys can beat last week's and we'll begin. So here we go with praise and worship. Now, praise and worship, um, I would like to say a couple of things here that um, – I am I am grateful, and I will start with this, and I am grateful to our creator for absolutely everything. And I know that's a, a blanket kind of a statement on this, but I can't think of anything that I am not thankful to our creator for. And I love his creations. I love his ways that he does stuff. I love his ecosystem to where we can have clouds and sun and rain and all of the different kinds of things that he has out there. And he's created all of this to support our life. He created an ecosystem inside of a little fishbowl. And we are sitting here with our creator who loves us well enough that he provides incredible stuff for us. If we burn down an entire forest in years, it will grow up. If we destroy things, Mother Nature, as they say, will come back and, and bring everything back. And, you know, Mother Nature, I think that's that's satanic when you say it, but it's our creator. It's the hand of our creator that, that brings things back to life. He rejuvenates things. You know, we, we you know, just like with childbirth and, and growing up and, you know, starting at infancy where we have no experience and we're able to walk through this life and we're able to cut ourselves and we are able to... It, it grows back and we're able to just enjoy the experiences of our, our creator. I'm thankful to him for these experiences and I'm thankful to him that we are able to have a journey that we're not just programmed minds, we're not just robots, that we can enjoy life, that we can choose our creator and that we have free will on this. And that's my first one. So go ahead. Let's go to the next one. I am thankful for the weather, the system we have, how... It's very beautiful. It can be sunny, and then the next moment it can just be rainy and cloudy. It's just a great thing, a great thing to see how much design, how much work he's put into this, how we can see that it's about to rain, and the, scar, the sky gets dark, it starts getting cloudy, or how snow, for some of you that gets snow, you can see that the seasons come, you get fall, all the leaves fall off, and it prepares for coldness, and then we get into what we have is snow. Yeah, absolutely. 
Jade, uh, what I do you got? I am thankful for sleep and rest because if not, if we went 24 hours every single day without sleep and rest, we would be completely destroyed by the end of the week. And then we get Shabbat, which is the biggest day of rest. We should be resting all day. So thankful for Shabbat and rest. Yeah, beautiful. Nicole. I'd have to say I'm thankful for hair. Hair, okay. For covering because it protects you from all elements of everything. In yes, it. and if I ever shave my giant beard, I'm going to look like I'm 12 years old. <laughs> Hair is great. Eli, what do you got? Uh, I'm thinking of like plants and crops. Like just the other day we had plants and watermelon seeds. They've already like sprouted and they're growing up. It's like really cool how things just like grow. Have you seen them last night? They all look dead. Only two. Only the two of them fell over and they all died. <laughs> but yes, that, that was good. Um, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that is good. All right. So is anyone in the chat room? Is anyone pecking around at all? So Damon got one. He said. Damon got one with his busted up hand. You shall not have any gods before me. Perfect. And Emissary of Elohim says, I'll sum it up. Master Sin, be Kadesh, Shema, Yisrael, guard Yahuwah's word. Okay, that's pretty good. He, he could do that. He can't, he can't cheat like that, though, but it's, <laughs> it's close. It's close. And then Damon again says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Nice. Damon is the lead here all on right. all of this. Here goes Zachariah Z. He got it. What do you got? What's he that? He says, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. Every herb seed bearing shall be for food. Master Sin. Then the big where Zeets eats. Do not wear garments mixed with wool and linen, and do not mix your crops. Oh man, hold on. We got to get a maraca for Zachary Z. He just um, he just beat the list. This is like three weeks in a row for Zachary Z. Renee says, "Honor your father and your mother." And I missed when uh, Damon did say up here, "You shall not commit adultery." Well, it looks like Dad and Son are leading the, uh, the, yep. the things here. Okay, that's very, very good. Awesome. Um, anyone else have any kind of praise and worship here? Anything else that you guys would like to, to do? Anyone in the chat room, too, if you guys have any kind of praise and worship, we'll read these out as you guys go. So feel free to toss them in. And if you guys have any questions on anything we're reading, um, let us know. We will break in the middle of this, and we will chat with you. The whole point of these, these live um, you know, t readings is, is essentially to hang out with you guys and to um chat you know that that's the whole point of these things so um let us get into our before you start yep. emissary of elohim does have one he says What's thank he you yahua for his freedom and the love of yeshua hamashiach and his great offering absolutely that's beautiful absolutely okay um today is month eight everybody it on our creator's calendar it is a shabbat which means it is the 24th day on the creator's calendar it is the seventh day on the Gregorian um, Satanic Babylonian calendar. It is November 19th, and I guess next week is um, a pagan holiday. We have Thanksgiving coming up, and for those who, um, I guess, celebrate that, that is not a that is, um, that is a worldly feast. That is something we should not be encountering in, and I don't think our creator would uh, be smiling or give us a nod of approval if we're hanging out and we're, we're not in his feast, but we're in other people's feast as well on that okay let us go um let us begin and this is one of these things that is the most important time of this thank you guys to the people in the chat room zach and son are winners again on Rihanna's this thing Rihanna, so it's, it's gonna be a family thing i think yeah. i think we're gonna have to do families versus um everyone else and i and i think they win the, sl the sluggers they won okay patsy says she's thankful for the loving sunshine that we have get that we have in jamaica and the shabbat that he has given us Oh, beautiful. And then Zacharias, he says, thank you. Thankful to be a part of the remnant. Yeah. And Nazareer says, I know I say that wrong, I'm sorry. So thankful to have his word and despite the separation in the world, to be able to connect to the remnant, to connect with the remnant family so far away. Love and respect always. Yep. And Rhiannon is, is still naming off commandments so and Damon. so is Damon. Okay, awesome. Oh, they took it by storm. Yeah, we, we took it by storm. Yeah, they're going to take us by storm. <laughs> but we are going to try to do this every week, guys. And so we will jump in here and have a little bit of fun. And again, the whole point of this is to um, re remember this stuff. And the more we talk about this, the more we recite it, the more we will remember it. And the point of this is to apply it to our lives. When we run into a situation that we don't know what to do, we need to weigh it against the Torah. And if we are anywhere close to stepping away from it or walking to the left or to the right, then we need to adjust ourselves and we need to come right back to where we need to be. And that is through that tiny little gate that most people are unable to make it through. And we want to be those people that can make it through. All right. So, gentlemen, let's slowly and meticulously go through these commandments. And thank you guys to everybody in the chat room who went over these with us. And let us begin. I will start with being fruitful. Multiply. 
replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Master sin. I love that commandment. I think it's very, very, very important. And I'll tell you something. I, I, let me let me break into a little bit on this. Is my mother is a hardcore Christian, has always been a hardcore Christian. And I've never been able to break through her Christian side of her. And she loves her pork and she loves her Sunday keeping. And um, this week, I did something that I've never, ever done before. Instead of arguing with my mother about religion at all, I just had a wonderful conversation with her. And at the very end of it, I said, look, mama, I'm going to, I'm going to go through a commandment, one commandment every week when I call you, I'm going to go through it. And I went up to, I said, look, mom, the very first commandment that we have that has been rejected by the most of the world is be fruitful. And that's it. I sat and talked to her for that maybe about five or so minutes. I never went beyond that. And instead of you telling the Christians that, hey, you know, we have a wonderful set of guidelines that we should be keeping and they immediately reject it. Let's go in and just start going over these very slowly. And when we talked about it, when I talked about it with my mother, I said, look, this is the very first commandment is to be fruitful. And I said, to me, that's, that's getting off the couch and not being lazy. It's, it's, it's having a good, solid life that you are doing things that are pleasing. You're building the kingdom. You're going forward with it. And she sat and listened. And I was blown away. That, and then at the end of it, she goes, she was telling me this little story about my Aunt Cheryl going to a nursing home and trying to preach to a whole bunch of people about three different layers of heaven and a bunch of stuff. She's like, she's like, Jason, are there three different layers of heaven like this? And I said, Mom, I've never read anything quite like what you guys are explaining on this. So for the first time in my entire life, she actually listened. And it was probably because I listened and I didn't try to badger her on this. And so there is hope for those who are trying to get others and the Christians out of it. But I think the programming of Christianity is so deep that if we just go right into a diving board and show them all the commandments, they it, they reject it. They're just like, there's too many. We can't take care of it. But when you read them slowly and, and, and work with them, there is hope. So for those of you out there who are struggling with those who are Christian Christians and trying to get them into the, the Torah and, the, and the, the faith of Mashiach, um, that that's one way to do it. So I just like to bring that in there. Okay, I don't know where I ended up. I think we're on hey, Masterson, right? Masterson, there we go. Every clean, moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Fifty-three times, friends. Fifty-three times we are told to do this law right here, right? Do you think there's a reason that it goes over and over and over and over? And it says this, maybe he's joking. Maybe we shouldn't guard the covenant. Or maybe he said it 53 times because this is exactly what we should be doing. Okay, every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Erum. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from a rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Laws for, there's criminal, there's laws for criminals. And guys, even though we have something really short right here, and I'm sorry for the, the sounds on our roof, it's just, it's, it's being, beating the drums. And that's just the sun. When it says there's laws for criminals, guys, that is 20, Exodus 22, 2 through 15. There's a lot of stuff in here on that one, and maybe we should space this up, but it, it's things that's more for the laws of the land because you can't exactly do what you're supposed to do to the criminals in the world that we live in right now. You'd end up in the clink. Okay, you shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums. And again, you would end up in the clink, but these are verses we must know because in a righteous, holy land, if you saw encountered a witch, wizard, or, or medium, you would pick up rocks and you would chuck it at them. Okay. Do not, do not lie with beasts. 
no sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, you shall return to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false reports. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with the other Elohim or outside of the land. Do not make or use this anointing oil on a normal person. That goes for 57 and 58, and those are Levitical um, sp uh, perfumes that we are not to make in that exact fashion. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Okay, and guys, under this, I, I, I was talking to Zach a little bit this morning, and there is a commandment, and I don't know the best way to keep this, this clean, but if there's an emission of semen from a man, you are unclean. And that is in these hygiene laws right here. And so there are other commandments, and that was one of them. And so if we have it bundled up into something like this, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, six different places on that, that is what that is. And so I didn't want people to forget that one, but it's important to know that. Okay, keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not lie or be... Uh, I missed one. Uh, do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor, and do not lie or be a liar. Two, two, two separate commands, but very, very important. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken one. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Don't be a bear. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manner of the nations. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shatzaret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you, you kill Ill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins, Yahuwah, and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being an Azir. Or is easy on the four corners of your garments. The law of whoever touches a corpse. Call Yahuwah's law of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. When in the land, the, law of a, the laws of a murder and victim's families. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws upon your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good inside of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not what, do what is right. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the voice of false prophets. Kill the false prophets. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. If a city is turned away from Yahuwah, burn the city and kill all the inhabitants. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the floor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Every time of the year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant astral poles near the altar. Any man or woman that has done wicked things in your gates, they shall be taken out and stoned. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Prophetess of Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. 
How to deal with a false pro a false witness among tour keepers. The first child is to get double portions. Law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Laws for the accuser and the accused in purity of relationships. If a man has a relationship with an engaged woman, both should be killed. If an engaged woman is raped, she is not charged with a crime, but the man shall die. If a man forces himself upon an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife, and never divorce her. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. You may eat from your, your neighbor's vineyard or grain, but you may not take it out of the field. There's laws of divorce. Newly married man should stay home for one year to be with his wife. Do not take pledge. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back to the forgotten chief in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. You cannot give a man more than forty stripes for his judgment, his wickedness. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. If a woman comes to defend her man and grabs the other man's private, you shall cut off her hand. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. All right, what do you got, Nicole? Why are you smiling and chuckling over there? Because Emissary of Elohim says that the roof only dis is only loud to us and distracting to us. It doesn't distract anybody else. And I said, but no, it's really loud here. It's really loud here. It's like popping fireworks right above our head. And so then Zachariah Z says, hold on, I lost it because it was up here. Where is it? Oh, Zachariah Z says, we know about loud and distracting with five kids. And then Emissary of Elohim said, praise Yahoo, wonderful distractions. And, and Rhiannon said she had to leave the room to go write down all the commandments. If not, she wouldn't have got that far yeah. because of all the distractions yeah. of their children. And then we I have Brother Grant, brother Glenn, and the Grand showed up. The Grand is dealing with frozen pipes. Frozen pipes? Uh -oh. oh, it's really cold in the States, isn't it? Yeah, they have snow. Already? Why are you... A lot of people do. I don't it know. is. We forget that. And my mom said it was 13 degrees down in Idaho. Oh, wow, that's, that's freezing. cold. Yeah, sorry, guys. For you, those of you in the States or places that gets cold, I am very, very, very sorry about all that for you guys. That sounds absolutely terrible. Um, okay, we are ready to read. We are going to um, get into this. Do we have anything else? Okay. This is... Um, we're going to read this. It's going to be a little bit different reading today because we are no longer using the um, exact Hallelujah Scriptures Grifters um, text. So Nicole and another dear sister from uh, that we just barely met, who is, is just a really, really wonderful gal, has been helping Nicole proofread this and get this up. And they got this all dialed in so we can read what used to be the Hallelujah Scriptures, which are now Yahoo Scriptures or whatever you want to call them. But they are now everybody's scriptures. And so they are on the website, and you can see them. And over the course of the weeks, months, and years, um, Nicole will be taking all of the, um, basically, the Holy Scriptures, and we'll be putting them to OCR, and we will be putting them back out. And we will have a version that is available in Microsoft Word and also a version that is available in um, WordPress. And so when we are done you will be able to have a free version of all of this stuff and you can basically if you have microsoft word you install the font package and you will have the entire scriptures in there you can do what you want with it and it should be awesome and so these are a lot of fun that we're doing the bottom version is the restored names um scriptures and the top version is the targums which we're reading out of Caden is reading out of the Hebrew Roots Bible. Jane is reading out of Sefer. the Sefer. And Nicole is running the chat room board. So here we are. And thank you guys again very, very much. Um, we do have a very small table here, but it feels like we have a lot of people here. Even with the small amount of people we have here, you guys are definitely our family. And we are so happy to have you guys and, and people that love Yah and people that really want to serve him. And that is our objective as well. And so here we are. One other thing I'd like to note is when you guys are done with when we're done with the reading if you guys want to actually hear it properly and actually know you can go to the website right here 
And if you guys go under the Bear Sheep Genesis, the Hallelujah Scriptures audio book, and you can hear how bad we actually pronounce this, and you can just click right there on Genesis 10. Now, Hallelujah Scriptures playing this on YouTube, so I can't play this on YouTube. Um, you guys can go right here and afterwards, and it is a beautiful reading, and it's just a little bit more. And so if you guys want can't get enough of uh, Genesis 10, then there's a little bit more for you guys. Anything else in the chat room? Um, it was a negative 11 for the grand this morning, Nate, or 21 for Zachariah. Whoa. And negative 11. Negative 11. <laughs> I was Whoa. <laughs> yeah, wow. We wouldn't even, you know, people, so once you move to like the places where it's not cold, if it gets to about 70 degrees, people start putting on like overcoats and hats yeah, and beanies. Hoodies, yeah. hoodies. It's it's like, like scarves and gloves. Yeah, if, they, if it ever got to like 60 degrees or lower, it would, these people would freeze to death down here. 50. I think, it, yeah. I think like, it would snow like one time way back in like, 30s or 40s and like yeah. thought the world was ending or something. Yeah, one time they seen snow down here and it's a legend, I guess, so something from back then. But anyway, let's get on to this, guys. And this is Bear Sheath 10. This is Genesis. So we are reading in these two different versions. Let's get to this. Everyone ready? Yep. Eli? And this is the genealogy of the sons of Noach. Shim, Cam, Yepeth, and sons were born to them after the flood. Okay, do we need to go to the top right? Uh, no, I was going to have you after you finish the sons of Yepeth. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Eli. The sons of Yepeth Gomer, Megog, Madai, and Yawan, and Tubal, Meshech, and Tires, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Ripoth, and Togarma. And I'm probably slaughtering these guys, but these are the proper names. Am I slaughtering Jade? Uh, some of these. Why are you shaking good. your head that I'm slaughtering these? Uh, because I think Togarma is more Togarma. How much? What do you think it is? It says here in the stuff because it does have a fanta. Togar, Togarma. Togarma. So my or, G is under, my G has a, a line over the top of it. And, and that's we, different in Hallelujah Scriptures. Yeah, it is different in Hallelujah Scriptures. So let's continue on. And the sons of Yawan, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dod, Dod Anim. From these, the coast, coastland peoples of the nations were separated into their lands. Everyone according to his language, according to their clans, into their nations. All right, now we're heading up to the Targums at the top here, and we will see what is the difference. And for those who do not know what the Targums is, we don't know exactly either. We're actually reading this along with you guys for the very first time. I have not read through the Targums at all. People said it was good. It was not good. Some people say anything. We as a group, or at least the tribe of the five of us here, along with all of you, I believe are astute enough to understand what the Torah is. And so when we were, were, our job with reading the Targums is to, first of all, figure out, is this doctrine or is this not? Does it have anything else outside of the Torah? Is this dangerous or is this scripture? And so we won't know this until we read it. So we're all reading it kind of as a group and we'll figure it out. You got something, Nicole? Okay, there we go. These are the generations of the sons of Noah and of the sons who were born to them after the deluge. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Thubal, and Meshech, and Thurus, and the names of their provinces, Afriki, and Germania, and Medi, and Macedonia, and Ayatina, and Asia, and Tharki, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Ripoth, and Togarma, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, Alas, and Tarsus, Akaziah and Dordonia. Now the Jerusalem post has a little different here. So Jerusalem says the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and the name of their provinces, Afriki and Garmenia and Madi and Macedonia and Yatania and Asia and Tharki, and the sons of Gomer and the names of their provinces, Asia and Faruki and, and, and Barbaria, and the sons of Javan, Alicia, and the name of their provinces, Alesterosum, Italia, and Dordonia. Okay, um, do I need to do one more? Uh, yeah, a little more. From these were distributed the tribes of the islands of the Gentiles, everyone according to his language, to his kindred in their nations. Okay, did you guys have the exact same stuff with all of these these no, it's kind of, somebody, what do you guys have? Somebody you said Asia, and I don't have Asia. You don't have Asia? Yeah, I gave them all their province names. We didn't get yeah, the no. Name. Okay, so where, where's the difference here? So we got, I, I don't remember Asia. And I, remember, I remember that here. It also said Italia. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, so it says the provinces and the Targum, but it only says their names. And, so basically, and, you got to where they dispersed to and who's the father of what nation, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so Asia, like uh, Germania. Germania, yeah. I don't could know. it be Germany, right? Yeah, could could that be where's Germany? There it is. Yeah. Germany. In uh, in the regular ones, actually, it's like Germania. So it kind of looks like Japheth might be Europe. Okay, so what do we have difference in this? Hold yeah. on. So what it says in the the scriptures, Yah's scriptures, um, the sons of Yepeth, Gomer and Magog. So Gomer and Magog. Madai, and it says Yawin, okay, and Thubal, and Meshech, and Tiras. Okay, those are the same, right? Mm -hmm. And the sons and the names of their provinces. Okay, so we did, that's what we don't have, right? We don't know the names of their provinces. Right. So are we to say that uh, Afriki could be Africa? Maybe. I, would th I think so. I would th it's very similar. Germania, Germany? So I, I think so. Looks like uh, it's Asia's Asia. Well, yeah, Japheth looks like he was kind of like the father of like Europe, Asia, and a little bit of Africa. I think I know that uh, Ham he has parts of uh, Africa as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, let's continue on. Where are we at here? You are on verse six. Verse six. Okay. Here comes the sons of Cam. Okay, and the sons of Cam: Cush, and Mitram, and Put, and Kenaan, and the sons of Cush: Seba, and Kalu Kaluwala. And Sabta, and Rama, and Sabtika, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush brought forth Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yahuwah. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Yahuwah. Guys, and this is the coolest thing about this version right here is that we finally get the, the ancient Hebrew name of our creator and we can just read it online. Everybody has a copy of this now, right? We don't have to go donate our shekels to some place and get something because it's, it's right here. So this is very, very cool. So again, thanks to, to Michelle and to Nicole for doing this. I'm just I'm ecstatic having the word of Yah where we can read it and it's available for everybody. Okay. All right, keep going. And 10. And the beginning of his reign was Bebel and and. Er Ek and Akkad and Kalneth in the land of Shinar. From that land he went to Ashur and built Nineveh and Rehoboth, Ur and Kelek. And Resin between Nineveh and Kelek, the great city. And Mitzrayim brought forth Ludim. Hold on, do we need to do? Okay, we're still in, in Ham, right? Yep. And Mitzrayim brought forth Ludim and Anamim and Lehebim. And nap to him. I'm probably slaughtering these. If, if Scribe Theodore is ever listening, he would probably laugh at my, my pronunciations of this. Scribe Theodore is the guy that did the actual How to Use Scriptures MP3s. If you go and listen to him, he worked and worked and worked and worked and got the names completely right. So when you listen to him versus me, he's right. Okay. So they brought forth Lehebim and nap to him and Pathrishim and Kashlehim, from whom came the Pelishites. Pelishites, that sound that came out that came out very bad sounding. That, <laughs> sorry guys. And Captorium. So um, un, un, unmute that thing there. Okay. And Canaan brought forth Zidon, his firstborn, and Keth, and Yebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Kilwanite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Ar Arwadite. And this is so hard to read these. And the Sem the Semurite and the Camorite. And afterward, the clans of the Canaanites were spread abroad. Wow, that was but tough. You should have just pushed play on the audio and let Ted read it first. I can't. We'll get banned. We get kicked off YouTube. Oh, that's right. They, they, they that's gave right. us a strike. We can't read the word of Yah on YouTube or they'd come after their shekels. That's right. Okay, here we go. And where are we at up top? I keep going. Okay. And the border of the Canaanites was from Zidon as you go towards Gerar, as far as Azara, as you go toward Sidom and Amora and Adma and Z Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These were the sons of Cam, according to their clans, according to their languages, in their lands, in their nations. Okay. And. And. Thanks, Eli. Right. And the sons of Cam, Cush and Mizram, and Put and Canaan, and the name of their provinces, Arabia. Okay, so this is something new right here. We didn't get, uh, we didn't get this, right? Middle East, I think. Right. So the name of their provinces were Arabia and Mizraim. And Alik Rock and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba and Havilia and Sabta and Rama 
and Zabtikia and the names of their provinces, Sin, Siniar, Sin Urai and Hindinki and Samadhi and Lubai and Zingai. Something funny there, Eli? <laughs> All these names. Yeah, these names are tough. These names are tough. Okay, so what do we make of the, I mean, the, the Sin, Sin Urai? Is this like the Sinai or something? Uh, I have Sim, Sim, yeah. I, um, Hind, Hindiki and Simadi. Do you have a verse on that one? This no. is no. I mean, these don't in the. They don't come right. in verses. So, uh, Sinai. Let's see. It's a Sini. 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 That's how they pronounce it here. Uh, it's, it's Sinai. It's one of the sons of Canaan. Doesn't give much further explanation than just son of Canaan. Son of Canaan. Okay. All Sini. right. So let's continue on with this. And the names of their provinces: Sinari and Hindinki and Samadi and Lubai and Zingai, and the sons of Maritinos. Zamargad and Mezag, and Cush beget Nimrod. He began to be mighty in sin and to rebel before Yahuwah in the earth. He was a mighty rebel before Yahuwah. Therefore it is said, from the day that the world was created, there hath not been as Nimrod mighty in hunting and a rebel before Yahuwah. And the beginning of his kingdom was Bavel the Great, and Hadras, Hadas, and Netz Ibn, and Kedispon, in the land of Pontos. From the land went forth Nimrod and reigned in Athur, because he would not be in the council of a divided generation. And he left those four cities, and Yahuwah therefore gave him a place, and he builded four other cities, Nineveh and Pel Pelatiath, Kartha and Perioth, and Telsar, which was builded between Nineveh and Hadiath, that is a great city, and Mizraim beget the Nevati and the Merioti and the Livaki and the Pantaski Skinny and the Pantrosm and the Nasiote and the Pantopoleti, from whom went forth the Philistine and the Cafodike. Wow, that was really, really hard. Okay, what do we make of this right here? One thing I would like to, to talk about real quick is uh, what they say, King Nimrod. And I was just reading in Jasher this morning. And um, for those who do not know about King Nimrod and about his reign to power, King Nimrod, uh, and I wouldn't say King Nimrod, the, he, he's not our king, but he is, was a king. Um, he ended up with the close of Adam and Eve. So this came out of when Noah was putting the ark together. When right before it was going, he took the clothes that were given to him by Adam and Eve and he put it in there. And as they were leaving the ark, Ham got a hold of it and he hid it from everybody. And he ended up giving it to, um, I think it was Canaan, right? It was Canaan, and Canaan gave it to Nimrod, right? Yeah. And so Kim, um, Canaan, so it wasn't until 20 years old when Nimrod actually put these clothes on. And it says when he put these clothes on, he like powered up. You know, he completely powered up. Um, he got he got super strong or whatever was with these clothes. He became super strong and super some sort of evil um, because I don't know if it's because of the clothes or because of who he was. But um, when he was 20, he actually did this. And so Nimrod is not just a human being. Nimrod was more than likely a had the genes of the fallen. And he was you know, he, he became this. OK, Jerusalem version. Let's read that at the top. And this is the other translation of the Targums. And it says, he was mighty in hunting and in sin before Yahuwah, for he was a hunter of the sons of men in their languages. And he said to them, leave the judgments of Shem and adhere to the judgments of Nimrod. On this account, it is said, as Nimrod the mighty, mighty in hunting and in sin before Yahuwah. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Hadras and Netzebin and Kat Isba in the land of Bevel. From that land, he went out towards Arthur and built in Nineveh and Pelatiath, Kartha and Hadiath and Telsar between Nineveh and Hadiath, which is a great city. And Mizram begat, are we at this? Or, yeah. And Mizram begat the Mariote and Pentopolite and Lusite and Peluse and the Pantask from whom went forth the Philistine and the Capo DK. 
if I never have to read that again, I will probably be totally okay. Not Brother, says, Brother Glenn says you're doing great. I don't know so much, Brother Glenn. I'm he trying. Says, don't worry, you're doing great. <laughs> he says it should be an exercise for someone that has a speech impediment, a it, tongue twister. It is. It is a tongue twister indeed. Um, okay, where are we at down here? Yeah, okay, and Canaan begat Zidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and Jebuse, and the Emirase, Emere, and the Girgashi, and the Hivai, Hive, and the Urke. Erke and the Antose and the Lutase and the Comtase and the Anta Antekoi. And after then, the seed of the Kenani was scattered. Okay, um, we have another one here the Jerusalem. Does this say the same thing? Pretty much. Hey. This says, yeah, let's. Is there anything different? I'm just looking up on this because I do want to be thorough. Okay, we don't have that before. So there it is right there. Okay. And the limit of the Kenani was from Kothus going up to Gerar, unto Azza, unto Saddam and Amora, Adma and Zeboim, unto Kaldai, Kaldai. These are the sons of Cam, according to the seed of their genealogies, after their languages, in the dwelling of their lands, in the kindred of their people. Okay. okay. So we just made it through two of these people here. Um, and we're ready to go. Where are we at? Come on. Come on. I think 21 for um, yeah. Shem now. Okay. And also to Shem, the father of all the children of Abel, Jepheth, the elder, brought forth. The sons of Shem, and Ashur, and Arp, Akashad, and Lud, Aram, the, and the sons of Aram, Uts, and Kul, and Gether, and Mash, and Arp, Arpakashad brought forth Shilak, and Shilak brought forth Eber, and to Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Yoktan. Okay, we got dogs we're dealing with here, folks. I will continue on, and hopefully we can deal with this. And Yoktan brought forth Almadad, and Shelep, and Katzworth, and Yerak, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Obal, and Abinma. Abn El and Sheba, and Ophir, and Kal Kalula, and Yobab, all these were sons of Yoktan. And their dwelling place was from Mesha, as you go toward Sephar, a mountain of the east. These were the sons of Shem, according to their clans, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. These were the clans of the sons of Noah, according to their generations, in their nations. And from these, the nations were divided on the earth after the flood. All right, let's try to do some uh, more tongue twisters here. And to Shem also was born a son. He is the father of all the sons of the Hebrews, the brother of Japheth, great in the fear of Yahuwah, the sons of Shem, Elam, and Ather, and Arp Hakshad, and Lud, and Aram. Arp Hakshad begat Shelech, and Shelech begat Eber, and to Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, because in his days the earth was divided, and the name of the other, Joktan. And Joktan begat Ilmodad, who measured or lined the earth with lines, and Sheleth, who led forth the waters of rivers, and Katsarmaveth, and Jerak, and Herodam, and Uzel, and Dikla, and Oval, and Avlim, Avimel, and Sheba, and Oper, and Havila, and Jobab. All of these are the sons of Joktan, and the house of their dwelling was from Mesha, by which thou goest up to Separve, a mountain of the east. These are the sons of Shem, according to their houses, in the dwelling of their lands, according to the kindred of their people. These are the houses of the sons of Noah, according to their houses, in their peoples, and from them the peoples the and from them are the peoples distinguished in the earth after the deluge. Okay, wow. Well, I think that was a decent chapter. Any thoughts on this? Uh, Besides, it was very hard words to... Uh, yeah, genealogies are hard to read. Yeah, genealogies are very hard to read. Uh, I agree. There wasn't a lot of commands or storylines. They are just basically telling us about who was from who, and we kind of get an idea of how the world came to be. I think yeah. something that's important is we can see how evil actually Nimrod was, especially in the Targum, because like, where everybody just sees that they don't read Jash or anything, they just know that Nimrod was there, right? Yeah. Nimrod was there, and you're like, okay, who's Nimrod? It doesn't matter. Everyone passed up, and nobody knows who Nimrod is. You ask people, most people who Nimrod is, and they don't know because they either didn't read Jasher or they, it was not in their Bible. And I think where that's where Targum is important 
Yeah. It has those details, and it's like Nimrod took everyone astray and went his way. Well, and it, we're, we're not done with Nimrod yet. Revela oh. Revelation 9-11 clearly says that another name for Nimrod um, is Apollyon. And there, Nimrod, see, here's the thing about Nimrod. Nimrod was not just known as Nimrod. When the Tower of Babel came down, there were 70 different angels that came down with them. And our creator said, confuse the languages. And so they ended up with 70 different nations at that time. I believe Hebrew at that time disappeared. Like, like the old school Hebrew that we had disappeared. So Nimrod didn't just, wasn't just called Nimrod. He was called, there's, there's all of them. There's Apollyon. Where's some names from Nimrod, God? Apollyon, Osiris, uh, Abaddon. Abaddon. Um, there's literally 70 of them and Baal. You, Baal, Baal is one of them. You will, you will see if you start studying the names of Nimrod that every evil thing that people worship is, is comes from Nimrod. And so in revelation nine 11, it clearly says, um, it says like the antichrist will be coming back. It'll be like, like Nimrod, the spirit of Nimrod coming up. So however that, whatever happens with all that, um, we're not done with Nimrod as of yet, but he was a very evil dude. And um, he was, you know, what they say was he was a hunter of men, but he was also what they say, a hunter of, of our creator. He was the one that came up with the idea that they were going to shoot arrows up into the sky and try to kill our creator. And they were going to go up in the sky and dominate it. And the Tower of Babel wasn't just about that. I think the Tower of Babel was, was about futuristic portals and things that they were trying to do, stuff that they, they had power to do. Same way with, with how they made the, the pyramids and all this other stuff. The giants of old all had this, this they were giant. They all had some kind of powers and, and different things of that nature. So it is very important that we understand who Nimrod is and the evil that he was. And, you know, the, the people of today, I mean, there's no difference between Nimrod and the people of today. They People are against our creator in every way. People do not seek our creator. They have found every way around it. If you look at modern medicine, there's there's nothing more than people that are trying to bypass the, the power of our creator. And, you know, they will they will gene splice and they will do all this crazy stuff that is just out of control and it's kind of as in the days of Noah. And, and so definitely here we are again and um nimrod was a bad dude and so i guess that is it is anything happening in the chat room not really but um the grand has water flowing now so. water flowing that's good much good 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 all right everybody i think that is it um if we don't We're have any have him read the oh yeah let us go ahead um one last thing we want to do with you guys right before we play uh, a little ditty on the way out is to read the ironic blessing to you guys and that will be read by mr Jaden boss and um eli go ahead and, and ramp this up for us and get ready for the next thing jade go ahead and start reading this please and yahuwah spoke unto moshe saying speak unto el Aaron and unto his sons saying on this wise you shall bless the shilling Israel, saying unto them yahuwah bless you and guard you yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Okay. Thank you, guys. May Yahuwah bless you guys. May he keep you guys. May you guys forever be in his grace. May you forever seek our creator where he's able to be found. And we will end it with a song. Go ahead, Eli. Much love, everybody.
Shalom. Shalom. Much love to you guys. Have a good day.